unlikely to think that in whatever community somewhere you will have over there a successful business school which will teach you everything. I think it should be in a in a big center somewhere which is supporting particular Aboriginal people to create the knowledge and skills required for running a um, company like this one. Well, guys, how are you going to physically create and sustain a company? And I just remember that what uh, Milton Friedman, the economic counselor of uh, counselor of uh, Ronald Reagan, was saying: If you want to see the capitalism in his pure view, go to Hong Kong. And I was in Hong Kong, and I looked on the street to see where it is the capitalism, and I could see it. Well, if you walk on a street in Hong Kong, in any single corner, something is happening. Everywhere, everybody, it is a business. Somebody is selling or doing something and try to get some money out of you. And it is ferocious competition. And that is the pure capitalism. Mm. Do you want that to happen? I don't know. But if you let that things to happen, <coughs> entire community will be flooded with fish and chips, uh, Chinese uh, products and something there which I am not really sure that you will be happy with. Well, yes. Well, it is another way. It is the Singapore way. It is a Singapore way. Yes, what I can tell you about Singapore and why this one is relevant for you and not only for you. In a second, just previous to the Second World War, Singapore was a small place on a map with five villages and entire population in the five villages was about 20,000 people. The leader of the community said what we can do, we are so small, we have no economic power, we have no army, we can't stand alone. And he went to the Malaysian uh, president and he said, please, take us over because we can't support ourselves. We need a structure. We need a power to support us. And he said, no. He said, no, we don't need you. You are insignificant. You are lazy people, but we don't want you. So the British, who they see the place where it is and they figure it out that it's a strategic point, step in and they start developing uh, Singapore. But how the Singapore was developed? The, this one, um, how was his name? I, I can't remember now. The leader of the community of that time, he said, yes, we can't give money to a fisherman and expect him to run a very successful company. So what he did, he borrowed money and he created a company or employed people to create a company for, for them. And when everything was set up, they said, okay, yes, you, you are clever enough, you are prepared, you know how to do it. We give this company to you for 90 years and you pay back the money in that period of time. You have to run the company to pay the money what we put into the company in 90 years. And a person was absolutely economically interested in running the business in a profitable way to enable him to pay the debt. Make the business efficient. That can be a solution for you. Another solution is what Gary was saying to yesterday, the kibbutz form. That you know that kibbutz how it's working. Mm. Well, so that is another alternative. Um, US and Europe they develop already uh, a system 
and they're having legislation and they're having support for businesses in Australia too. It is a lot and if you go in ah, we stop. Um, so it is a lot of legislation in Australia, in Europe, in America, which is based on previous tradition. But in the case of my country, which was totally destroyed and for 48 years was no freedom, entrepreneurial freedom in a country, all that skills disappear. So what is the difference between Romanian people and you? No. We have to start from scratch. And that's why I am trying to tell you, guys, it is an opportunity there. Take advantage of it. The government is giving you funds. Have nothing to do with the politics and your ambition. Use the opportunity when they give it in your own interest and in interest of your nation. You are doing good not only for you, you are doing good for the entire community. So please have a look on to and implement as many or, or try to develop as many uh, new companies as you can. Well, be wise, and I can tell you that it is a, a big um, trap on the top of this one. I have seen that. What is happening? People, they, at one stage, sorry, sure. uh, uh, in one stage, when you open a business and you are in a process of opening the, the new venture, you get all kinds of barriers and all kinds of hurdles which you have to overpass. And in some stage, some of the people will find out that it's too hard and they give up. That is a pity. It is an other extreme. You are a very successful entrepreneur. You have and you get enough money or more than actually you need. And that extraordinary success is changing people's personality. Have you seen that? Yeah. People who they have a lot of money, they think, oh, I have enough money, I can do whatever I like. And he's buying a, a luxurious car, uh, for, I don't know, expensive trips. And what happening? In three months time or in a year time, they are bankrupt. So that's why I will say that management brain or that brain on the top there should be there to supervise the guys and say, no, no, look at that. And some of the guys also, they're using the company money for personal use and the company is undercapitalized. And when a shock is coming in an economy, they go into a bankruptcy immediately. <laughs> so there are a lot of issues which you have to think about it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.